Good morning, everybody. Brian with Sport Truck RV in Chandler, Arizona. We're located in the southern end of the Phoenix Metroplex, right off the I-10. Today, I'm gonna to run you through a 2007 Renegade IT40 LGX liftgate. All right, guys, let's start out with the liftgate. This unit has the 220 volt screw gate from Renegade. In my opinion, probably one of the better lift gates out there. It does not have all the herky jerkiness of a hydraulic lift gate. Um, if you have a, like a newer operator or something like that. So runs off a 220 motor located up top there. Very, very smooth. Um, there's no need for the back roll up door on a Renegade lift gate because the door seals up really, really well to the back wall and there's no reason for dust and dirt to get inside there. So uh, this is a 4,000 pound lift gate. It extends out to 12 feet with the flap. You can get pretty much any door car, motorsports car on it. Dragsters have to be spun around, put on a dolly and loaded in backwards. So we'll talk about the lift gate a little bit more. Let's head inside real quick. This trailer features sliding glass doors front and back. There's a meat locker curtain halfway. In association with the two and a half ton BART AC unit, it keeps this thing mighty cool in the hot summer months at the racetrack. Okay, inside the trailer, up front, we're gonna feature, like I said, a two and a half ton BART AC unit. There's also two big tire racks up there. In addition to a compressor, I believe it's a 20 gallon compressor up there. And there's some additional storage space up there as well. Uh, also a good place to store spare tires up there for the trailer. Moving mid midships here, so your overhead rack system sits at 79 inches. You're 57 inches upstairs. That's your clearance on the upper deck. So you got your typical helmet and fire suit closet located right here. On this side, we have two engine bays or tranny bays. There are tie downs in there as well. Up top here, overhead cabinets, lighting, and there is airlines connected to the, com to the air compressor up top. Uh, control for the AC unit is located right here. Um, speakers for the radio, which is located there, is located throughout the trailer. And we have a cobalt uh, vice right here as well. So over here is just a small little storage area. It's a good place to kind of a catch-all for cell phones, uh, a crew radio discarded, something like that, with a small overhead cabinet above that. So. Uh, right here, it just winds up being general storage area for the trailer. Um, you do have a really, really nice toolbox right here. And then there's additional closet space down through here. There's an airline in here. Um, they looks like they have some hanging space near where they possibly had their headsets in there. Uh, there's power in each one of these compartments as well. So, and then you have adjustable doors. This one's catching the airline track a little bit, but um, down below they have the weights. I'll explain to you in a few minutes why those big 55 pound dumbbells are in there. So kind of a clever idea. Uh, first time I've seen that, but it's a neat idea. And I'll cover that in a bit. Good closet space here. You can get some axle, uh, axle put in here. Just good general storage back through there. So moving back, these are the, I call them meat locker curtains that we discussed earlier. That's for keeping the front area nice and cool. There's two fold down tables on this unit. Uh, so it makes more of a good workspace here. This trailer in particular, I'm guessing was used for road racing because they have a, 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 an individual um, ramp over system that appears to be homemade. They put inside here so they can bring a car in here that's gonna be wider than what the wheel boxes are. So the car would sit on top of these wheel overs and then it gets tied down from there. So uh there's a roof hatch here to get up on the roof so you can you can get on, you, I'm, I'm sorry get on the upper deck you've got uh the space up front to get on there you have one right here this works good just to stand here and tie down the car from underneath it so you don't have to get up on the roof a lot of guys will drop down one of their tires and their rims stand on that and access that i've seen guys with some step stools do that as well so 110 lighting throughout the coach this is the pre-led days on this 2007 model so strap hanger with tie down, so a lot of guys will put that on there too. Back here, we have the glass doors for enclosing off the back of the trailer. They are lockable, 
So if you have a driver that wants to hide from his fans and not sign autographs all day long, you can just close that door off there. So, and like I had mentioned, this is a screw gate. Uh, the lift gates, and obviously in the open position right now, there is no, like I said, there is no back door back here. So that operates off a chain drive system. And when we basically sell a unit to somebody, we basically run them through completely and accurately how to operate the lift gate. It's very imperative that people understand. The screw gate makes it a little easier than a hydraulic jack, but we will walk you through that to ensure you know how to do it properly. So uh, there's another access hatch right here, goes up onto the top and Aaron will run you up to the top here shortly. So in the back back here, we're 81 inches between the wheel boxes and that puts us like, like 86 between the door. Most automobiles are in that 80 to 81 range if it's a motorsports car. Uh, some of the road racing cars will be much, much wider. We're up on top now. Tire racks that I previously mentioned, the two and a half ton Bard AC unit. So the added bonus of this trailer is it comes with an aero awning, which runs the full length. Um, it appears to be a 12 foot awning out the sidewall. So you're basically looking at a 40 by 12 foot undercover option if you want to run that route there. So awnings located, this is your fabric here. This is the bag that holds it all. Basically what you do is you put it in the bag, you go up through the roof mount, put it on the roof, spread it out, drape it over the arms, and it's set in place. After you do it probably three or four times, um, it takes you about an hour to assemble that, but it's nice to have the complete shade underneath there. So, um, storage, there is, storage is located underneath throughout the top here. The fuse panel is located down in here. Uh, up front here is going to be our compressor. That's located right under there. That's a Bel Air compressor. So, on this side here, I didn't look here earlier. I apologize. So, that's just open storage in there. And then there's open storages here as well. So there's aluminum steps made out of tread plate for the side door and then for the rear lift gate area so you can step up and get into the trailer. So um, these are the legs in this box back here. So when you put the awning on the ground, you have poles that go to the ground. And that's what those barbell weights were for, is they were using those to tie the strap around them to weigh the awning down in windy conditions. So, on this side here, these are going to be the upper arms. This is what goes from the roof rail out 12 feet, I believe it is. And they're all individually numbered on where they go. And then on this side is going to be the poles that go from the lower end of the, uh, the awning trailer up to these to get it all set up there. So on this particular unit toward the back, they've got some E-track on a homemade wall system they put up here that's fully removable if they want it removed back there so once again we're 57 inches from this point here to the crossbars which are located up on top so 57 inches if you have like a 58 59 inch car uh, to the top a lot of guys will put them on the lift gates and they just kind of find a way to kind of find a way to kind of squeeze them in there a little bit till they clear but, uh, but right now, um, the difficulty is getting it in that back door if it's taller than 57. So um, not too many race cars 57 inches tall. So uh, that's a quick recap of what's up here. Uh, we can move outside of the trailer now. And on the way out, I'll show you the operation of the generator and everything else. Okay, here is the quick panel to operate the coach. On top is our fuel. That's a 39 gallon fuel tank. Just push the button, it tells you how much we got. Right now we're just a shade under a quarter tank. It gets delivered with a full tank. Uh, this is a control panel for the PowerTech generator. It's a 20K EPS. Uh, your oil temperature and your water temperature is handily uh, accessible just by looking at it there. And there's a little over 3,000 hours in this generator. That is easily a 20,000 hour generator if you take care of it. And from what everything we've seen, we've freshly serviced the generator it runs like an absolute top. So lots of power there for you. Uh, your lighting system are these two right here. That's your 12 volt in your 110 system. And then you also have the air dump for the axles and you have the air compressor switch here. So you can just flip the switch here, turns on your compressor and you're getting air throughout the whole thing. And then outside is your side quartz lights right here. So 
Uh, once again, these are the old halogen style quartz lights. So you can update those if you want to update them. So there are some LED options that'll fit right into those holes. This is going to be our liftgate controller. It's a very, very simple system. It's literally going to be your power switch up and down. The chains, which are located right here, this is what's going to tilt this trailer. That's what closes the door. But like I said, it's a very smooth, easy system. The hydraulics will kind of come down sideways left and right, but the screw gate system is a single screw that you operate this thing up and down, and this is going to close the door, like I said. The, the extra bonus to these screw gates is on the roof, when you come through the rubber flap, there is a half inch socket up there, which is attached directly to the screw. If you lose power at the racetrack, say the generator doesn't work or your toter home is out of power, but something's not working, you can manually put this gate in. That's very rare in the lift gate world. So half inch uh, socket on your cordless drill, attach it to the top of the screw and you can run this thing up and down. And once again, once you get to a point, this thing will close once this chain grabs it. So you put it down, it'll go down, and this chain, chain will grab that right there. So I'm gonna demonstrate that just partially real quick so you get a good understanding how these work. There is no reason to be afraid of lift gates, people. They're hoppy, they're bouncy sometimes, but if you properly operate them, there's no reason to be afraid of them. I get a lot of new clients that are a little bit scared of them. Heck, I wasn't first, but they're very safe and as long as you operate them properly, no worries whatsoever. So quickly, once again, to drop to lift, to close the lift gate door, you're gonna hit the down button, and you'll see the transition where this chain tightens up, and then it pulls on the door. So I'm hitting the down button. These chains are taut, and it closes the door. To reopen the door, you hit the up button, and the screw wants to grow up. And then your chain will loosen as it goes up. As these things loosen, then you can go ahead and unhook, unhook the chains on both locations here. Just keep in mind that obviously when, it, when, when the chains are loosened, then you can put it all the way to the ground. So once again, it's a very, very smooth system for these screw gates. You have to be on pretty level ground in order for this system to operate properly. So in the pit area, a paddock, um, you can't really be in an off-road scenario unless you're really, really level. Most guys will level up on the wheels with some two by 12s or something like that to get her pretty close to level. You can have a few inches of difference there, that's not a problem, but very, very, very nice, easy system to operate. So, okay, to power the lift gate, generator is on or you gotta be plugged in. Then you basically just hit the switch to turn it on and your up and down buttons. That's all you got. It's not a two stage button, it's a single stage button. Once again, the chain system is what closes the door. So plugs into the sidewall here and away you go. On the outside of this trailer, you see the awning points. They're gonna be located down through here. The one at the back, your fabric slips in this rail right here. It connects along the top rail. And then there's several points down through here where the awning arm would come out and connect with it out there. So outside, you've got power in two locations. You've got two air outlets as well out here to connect all that there. So, and then once again, we have the steps over there to access the trailer quickly. So more about the trailer. It's 40 foot long. It's 13 foot five inches tall. On the roof is gonna be the observation deck up there. Uh, you access access that from the upper deck up to the hatch um, so you can watch the event from up top or it'll help you put the awning up things like that um, we have three 10,000 pound STI air ride axles so your tow vehicle has to be equipped with air um, we would suggest a sport truck sport chassis M2 112 or toter home and higher you are not going to pull this with a pickup truck a 450 or a 550 not going to work so uh, essentially, this thing weighs around 19,000 pounds, the way it sits empty. Once you start putting stuff in there, you know, you're going to have quite a bit of weight in there. So it's just too big of a trailer for a dually to handle. I get that question a lot. So let's move forward. So double side doors 
and it's got twin hydraulic jacks on board. It's 24,000 pounds of jacks, more than enough to operate this trailer up and down, loaded or unloaded that way there. So you can load this trailer unhooked. There's plenty of weight on here. Even with it cantilevering back in the lift gate, you should be able to, to load a car in the back, no problem. So uh, let's move a little bit more forward here. Okay, up front is that two and a half barred AC I was talking about, that's located right here. So this is a two and five sixteenths gooseneck ball. It's a four and a half inch centerpiece with a five inch outside piece. So those are a little hard to find these days, but that's rated at 32,000 pounds, but Renegade derates it down to 26,000 pounds to keep you under FET. So up underneath here, you're gonna see a 50 amp plug-in. The hydraulics are located on the right hand side there. And then back up underneath there is the PowerTech generator. Uh, like I said, that's a 20, 20K unit. It's got a nice muffler on it, so it's not too incredibly loud, but it's not an enclosed system. My clients through the years, they've all told me they're getting 20,000 hours easy out of that generator like I mentioned earlier. Right here is gonna be your diesel fill up for your generator. Open that compartment, it's dropped down right inside there. This is just an air vent for your compressor, so it'll breathe inside of there. And then once again, moving back, we have an exhaust tip for the generator. This one has Continental tires on it. They're 17.5s, 245, 70, 17 and a half. Uh, extremely heavy ply. Um, they're rated for this trailer. And I get a lot of customers bringing these in pre-owned with these Continentals and they've been really, really happy with them. So good tires, not gonna be blowing out. Uh, a quick note on tires, tire pressure. The single most important thing you can do to a trailer is monitor tire pressures. You do it with your race cars, <laughs> you do it with ease. If you start out with a low tire, it's gonna heat up and it's gonna blow. So tires, 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 guys. Uh, moving back, there's not much back here other than the bottom side. You got rollers on the back, so if you go into a racetrack, something like that, there are rollers on the back as well. So that's just a quick summary of what this uh, trailer can do for you. Uh, we can be located at www.sporttruckrv.com. And once again, I'm Brian, but any of the other team members here can certainly assist you answering your questions. So if you think this might be something for you, give us a shout. Thank you. Hey, this is Daryl Elder with Sport Truck RV. Thank you for visiting our channel. We specialize in Super C RVs, Renegade, Newmar, and ATC aluminum trailers. We update new content every week of all of our new inventory. So please subscribe so you never miss a new unit. Thank you.